Okay, let's go. Hello, my name is Dima and I'm going to tell you about my model rocket project I'm working on. Any rocket should have some ways to achieve stable flight and in most cases model rockets rely on fins and passive aerodynamic stability. But for this project I'm doing something completely different. This rocket is designed with thrust vector control. TVC is a system that can steer the rocket by slightly changing the direction of thrust. Of course, some special electronics and software are involved. This rocket is not going to fly very fast or very high. The main goal of this project is to achieve stable, actively controlled flight. Stay with me and I will tell you more about the design. In this video, I'm going to cover only rocket hardware. That may look like 90% of the project, but in reality, it was an easy part. The biggest challenge was the software, control system design and tuning, and getting over numerous failures. I started with building electronics. This is what the electronics module looks like. The main component here is a flight computer I designed for this rocket. This flight computer is built around STM32F7 microcontroller. It's a great powerful microcontroller with double precision FPU and lots of memory. It turns out to be an overkill, as in the end the rocket is using only around 10% of this microcontroller's computational power. But it's better to be on the safe side, right? The board is powered by three switching voltage regulators with unreasonably bulky inductors. These regulators take power from a 2-cell lithium polymer battery, which is 8.4 volts when fully charged, and produce 3.3 volts to power microcontroller and other components, 5 volts for servo motors, and 24 volts for rocket motor ignition and parachute ejection system. To maintain stable flight, the rocket should know its orientation, so there is a 9-axis inertia measurement unit on the board that combines an accelerometer, gyroscope and geomagnetic sensor in one tiny package. But frankly, I ended up relying only on gyroscope measurements for attitude estimations, as it was simple and gave more than enough precision during flight. The board is also equipped with a barometer for altitude measurements, a flash chip for data recording and an SD card slot that I never used. That was my first experience with PCB design and I made a bunch of mistakes in schematics and components selection. So, for example, power rails are extremely noisy and the whole pyro system design is a mess. Luckily, I was able to fix most of the problems in place and the microcontroller just ignoring the awful noise on its 3.3 volts supply. But the biggest mistake was that I didn't include any type of wireless connection to the design. So, in the end I added HC05 Bluetooth model connected to UART interface. So now I can operate the rocket with a simple Android app. The main task of the flight computer is to operate two small servo motors in this thrust vectoring mechanism. The mechanism itself is very light and compact and currently I'm using it with a D3 rocket motor and it's the best option I can buy where I live. D3 motor produces 3 newtons of thrust and it's not much, so the low mass of every component is quite important. I really liked the idea of a small rocket diameter of 60 mm and I didn't want to make any cutouts in the tube for servo motors. So after many hours in CAD software, I found a solution. I placed both servo motors on the intermediate frame. One operates the innermost frame and the other one pushes itself against the rocket body. That design saved a lot of space and mass. The only disadvantage is that it adds an extra moment of inertia to X-axis and makes it a little bit less responsive compared to Y-axis. 
The last important part is the parachute system. Usually, model rockets uses a tiny gunpowder charge to eject a parachute with a nose cone. This design is different. The idea is that we have two doors and a pusher, all acts together in a single motion and eject the parachute from the side of the rocket. This action is powered by four springs, and when it's loaded, a small piece of fission line holds everything in place. To eject the parachute, I send current to a special wire that heats up and cuts the fission line, releasing the mechanism. I like the design, but it's not ideal. The applied force when it's loaded is quite high, and the fission line gets stretched a bit, so these doors are not 100% closed. I think someday I will refine this design. The parachute is a very simple 8 corner piece with a hole in the middle. The rocket body is just two layers of dense paper glued together. That might sound weak, but the rocket survived three unsuccessful launch attempts with only a minor damage, so it's good enough. The final mass of the rocket is only 237 grams. The last launch of the rocket was almost a success. Okay, let's go. <laughs> the parachute was ejected, but it didn't inflate. Most likely my parachute packing method was wrong. The other issue was the small oscillations during powered flight. The maximum deviation from vertical position was 12 degrees. It's not that much, but it could be better. After 55 meters fall and hitting the ground at 15 meters per second, the rocket was heavily damaged. TVC system was completely destroyed. But that's fine. I consider the project completed as I achieved my primary goal. I'm planning to redesign the whole thing in the future and make it lighter and more reliable. That's it. There will be more videos about my other projects. So if you're interested in robotics, rockets, electronics and software, consider subscribing. Thanks for your attention and see you!